This film begins by showing an illegal fighting arena in Montana. At this place, an adult woman named Frankie came to look for a man named Carter, the undefeated fighter in this fighting arena. Frankie wanted to use his services as a security guard for her bar, which is on the outskirts of the Glass Key City Beach. Frankie then realized that the man she was looking for was now fighting in that arena, and she was very happy when she heard that Carter had played six fights in a row, and he always won the game. Not long after, a man entered the fighting arena to challenge Carter, who was very arrogant because he thought there was no opponent worthy of him. But when Carter saw that his opponent was Dalton, he chose to leave because he was afraid of the worst that would happen to him if he fought Dalton, even though Carter had to be shouted at as a coward by the people in the place. A man who didn't accept that he lost a $500 bet because of Dalton's presence suddenly stabbed him with a knife. Then Frankie approached Dalton who was trying to treat his wound due to a knife stab. Frankie then tried to offer Dalton to work with her as a security guard at her bar called The Roadhouse with a salary of $5,000 per week. Besides, he only needed to work for one month because recently, several new customers had come there every night to cause a riot at the bar. Frankie had tried to ask the police for help every time they mispaved, but it didn't help her at all. A friend then advised her to come here, looking for a man named Carter. But after seeing Dalton, Frankie instead wanted to use his services. However, Dalton instead flatly refused Frankie's offer to work with her, and instead told her to look for another man. Frankie wasn't being discouraged by the refusal, so she wrote down the address of her bar and would wait for Dalton if he changed his mind. Then, while listening to a radio broadcast about a USC fight, Dalton drove his car until he reached the train doorstop. But strangely, Dalton instead had the desire to commit suicide by stopping his car so that it would be hit by the train. Dalton escaped death, then he decided to go to Frankie's place. Arriving at the bus stop, Dalton met with Charlie, a teenager who runs a bookstore with her father, Stephen. Charlie then asked Dalton about what made him come to this small town. Dalton said that he had come here to work at the roadhouse. Hearing that, both Stephen and his daughter were a little surprised because there was a new person who wanted to work at that place. Stephen then showed Dalton the location of the roadhouse and asked him to continue walking until the last sign 7-7. Seven to seven. Not only that, Stephen also said welcome to Glass Key to Dalton. Arriving at the roadhouse, Dalton met the bartender named Laura and a waiter named Billy, who apparently knows who Dalton really is. Billy knew that the man who just arrived was Elwood Dalton, a former USC fighter with an extraordinary record. Dalton felt honored because there was someone who remembered him and besides, he felt happy to be in a quiet place like this. That night, Dalton was still enjoying the fun atmosphere with full music. While Dalton was enjoying live music at the bar, suddenly several fierce men entered the bar. It turned out these men were the ones who often caused trouble at Frankie's bar. Dell, the gangster leader, was seen causing trouble by breaking several things in the bar and trying to harass the female workers there. Billy tried to help the girl, but Dalton, who saw this, then approached the thugs and asked Billy to take care of the other customers. Dalton then invited Dell to have a nice talk with him outside the bar, but it seemed Dell refused because he wasn't done having fun in the bar. They finally came out of the bar and Dell was still very annoyed with Dalton, who didn't seem afraid of him, especially since Dalton dared to ask him to leave. Even Dell belittled Dalton and asked how he would chase him and his gangsters away. Shortly, Dalton managed to paralyze them easily. In fact, he didn't get the slightest blow to his body. Dalton intended to take them all to the hospital, because they suffered broken bones and also had bruises all over their bodies. At the hospital, Dalton met a doctor named Ellie, who didn't seem very happy with the mess he had made. Because of the stupid fight they had, Ellie and her colleagues had to work overtime treating their wounds. Ellie said that Dalton should have called the police so that there wouldn't be a problem like this. However, Dalton said that it wouldn't help because he thought that the police didn't really care about these bastards. Suddenly, the wound on Dalton's stomach opened. Ellie, who saw it, tried to treat Dalton. After returning from the hospital, Frankie met Dalton and gave him his salary for one week, according to the agreement. Dalton accepted his fees and asked Frankie why this bar was called the Roadhouse.
Frankie said that in the past, her late uncle owned this bar before it was given to her. Frankie's uncle used that name to make it look funny, because this bar is the only one in this city. Dalton was allowed to stay on Frankie's uncle's boat, instead of having to spend money to stay at a hotel. However, he had to be careful, because there was a big alligator living under the water. The next day, Dalton woke up from his sleep, because Laura was on the ship to wake him up, and also brought him breakfast. Laura also thanked him for successfully knocking down Dell and his gang, because before Dalton came here, there had been several guards who worked at the roadhouse, but couldn't last more than two days. Laura was actually going to resign, but after seeing what Dalton was doing, she gave up her plans and hoped that things would get better there. Little did Dalton know that what happened yesterday made him famous in Glass Key. Everyone who saw him would always greet him and ask how he is. Of course, this made Dalton ask Frankie, how could everyone know his name? Frankie said that that's what happens here, because in this place, gossip spreads quickly. Shortly, on a yacht, there were two men named Snap and Mo, facing their boss Ben. Here, Ben asked how their job was going in terrorizing the people of Glass Key, because he heard that they had been defeated by the guard on the bar. Ben also asked where Dell was, because he wasn't here with the two of them. Mo explained that Dell was still in the hospital, because he had a mild concussion after the fight. Hearing this, Ben became even more annoyed, because he had hired them expensively to scare Glass Key's people, but they lost fighting a guard from out of nowhere. Ben didn't care what was going on there. He only wanted them to be able to finish their job according to his wishes. A man named Vince, who saw that Ben seemed frustrated with what was happening, suggested to him that maybe it was time for them to involve their parents. Activities at the roadhouse were running as usual. Some people came wanting to just hang out, but some people also started fighting. Dalton, who saw the commotion, then taught Billy basic fighting techniques to deal with those thugs. Dalton asked Billy to stay calm and not be afraid to handle them. Billy just had to take a big step back by looking down, and then immediately gave a quick punch to his opponent's face. And from then on, Billy slowly took on Dalton's role of being the roadhouse's security guard with his best friend, Reef, who got a direct invitation from Dalton to help Billy. Dalton had a nightmare again, when he used to fight in the USC championship. While he was having breakfast in a cafe, he accidentally saw Ellie there. Ellie asked Dalton to talk and a little warning to him that some people in Glass Key have a certain way of resolving a problem. Their loyalty and family bonds are so strong that even the police are not always helping as they should. Ellie warned if Dalton got into trouble with the wrong person, he could get hurt or maybe even worse. However, even if it was quite profound, Ellie asked Dalton to keep enjoying his life in this city. Shortly that evening, Dalton came into Frankie's room to take his salary. Besides, he also looked around the room. Frankie thanked Dalton a lot because he wanted to be in this place and help her for the past few days. When Dalton was walking home over a bridge, suddenly a car driven by Dell tried to hit and kill him. Luckily, Dalton survived the accident, then he returned to the ship where he was resting. But when he got there, he was surprised to see Dell, who was already there, carrying a rifle and intended to finish him off. Dell was not happy if Dalton disturbed his work at the bar and hoped that after this, they would never meet again. Dalton fell into the sea because of the fight, but soon after that, a crocodile, which had been the subject of rumors for a long time in that city, appeared and ate Dell's body. An old man who accompanied Dalton confirmed that the crocodile must have hidden its food, just like when his dog was eaten by the crocodile. However, this old man was curious about why Dell was here. Feeling that there was something strange about this, Dalton then headed to Charlie's place to look for information and some clues about the roadhouse's location as well as other places. He discovered the fact that the roadhouse's location was very profitable for shipping goods by sea because the depth of the sea nearby could allow a ship to dock. Shortly, when Dalton returned from Charlie's place, he had been awaited by Ben's men. A man named Sam said that his boss, Ben, wanted to meet Dalton, so Sam ordered Dalton to come with him. If Dalton didn't want to obey his orders, Sam would take him forcefully. Dalton, who saw this, actually laughed at him, 
because if Sam was intimidating him, he had to look convincing and serious when talking to him. Dalton then said that if Ben wanted to talk to him, he was the one who had to meet him at the roadhouse where he worked. Later, Frankie was surprised because Dalton was in her room. Frankie then asked how Dalton was after what happened last night. Actually, Frankie was very happy to hear that Dell had been eaten by a crocodile, because all this time he and his gang have caused a lot of chaos at the roadhouse. But apparently, Dalton's intention was to ask Frankie why Dell only focused on making a fuss at the roadhouse. Frankie said that she didn't understand that and asked Dalton not to think about it so he could sleep in peace. Meanwhile, Sam met Ben in his private yacht and informed him that the guard had broken his finger and said that if Ben wanted to meet him, he had to meet him himself. Ben was furious when he heard that because a guard suddenly came to this city and is now blocking his big dreams. Not long after, Ben's cell phone rang. He got a call from a prison inmate at a Florida penitentiary but Ben was seen angry at getting the call then threw his cell phone into the ocean. In another place, there was a hitman named Knox. He got a call from a prison inmate in a Florida penitentiary who wanted to ask him for help in solving a problem in Florida caused by his son. On the other hand, Ellie met Dalton at the boat where he lives and invites him to go somewhere using the boat belonging to her ex-boyfriend because she knows where the spare key is stored. The two of them arrived on an island submerged by sea and then enjoyed that afternoon happily. At this moment, Ellie said that the police did not find Dell's body. Ellie had told Dalton not to deal with wrong people, especially Ben, a man who came from a prominent family in Florida and built most of this city. Hearing that, Dalton felt that he had a bad feeling about it and asked Ellie to take him back to the pier. Dalton said that Ellie didn't know who he really was but Ellie insisted that she already knew who Dalton really was. She also knew what had happened to Dalton, and instead said that this was a date. On the other hand, after a long journey, Knox arrived at Ben's place and asked who he was because he caused a commotion, especially after finding out that their motorbike had been damaged because it was hit by the car he was driving. Not long after, Ben met Knox, who suddenly hit his face and said that he was there because of orders from his father. Ben's father specifically ordered Knox to clean up all the mess that Ben had made. Even though Ben's father is currently in prison, his network and spies are everywhere, monitoring Ben's actions every day. Knox was going to stay at Ben's house, and after that, he also asked about the guard who had messed up Ben's business. Knox would also sort out the problem. If he had started working, he could definitely solve all problems. After Dalton returned, two policemen came up to him, and asked him to come with them. The police would like to ask some questions related to the incident when Dell died. Shortly, Dalton arrived at a place and met the sheriff, Tom. At this point, Tom said that he was the highest leader in Monroe County, and in particular, he looked after the glass key in a special way. Tom asked Dalton to immediately leave the city because if he refused, Tom could have caught him no matter how. Dalton, who objected to Tom's intimidation, was forced out of the car and was beaten by Tom. And when Tom was about to shoot Dalton, Ellie came to stop Tom because she had been suspicious since taking Dalton back to the pier. It turned out Tom is Ellie's father. Ellie began to tell the story that when her mother died, she decided to leave Glass Key, but she didn't know why she was moved to return to this place. Her father used to work for Gerald, Ben's father, who is now in prison. They were doing business in a fleet of chartered boats for tours and also drugs. It seems that now, Ellie's father is working for Gerald's son, and asked Dalton to immediately leave Glass Key. Meanwhile, Vince and Sam were already at Stephen's bookstore and planned to burn this place. Shortly that night, Dalton was already in the roadhouse, and not long after, Ben arrived to meet him. Ben was planning to bribe Dalton and asked him to leave town immediately. Ben showed a YouTube video of Dalton's last fight in the UFC, which had been deleted due to the terrible incident. Ben knew that the person he was fighting was his best friend, and what had happened destroyed everything he had achieved so far. Ben then said goodbye and asked Dalton to enjoy the rest of his night. After that, Knox and Ben's men entered the roadhouse and started causing chaos in the place. In the end, Dalton came to stop Knox's craziness, 
and no one could stop him. The fight made Dalton feel like he couldn't do anything else in that place. He then planned to quit this job and chose to leave the town, even though Frankie said that he was a coward because he was afraid of those people. When Dalton arrived at the bus stop, he accidentally saw that Stephen's bookstore had burned to the ground because of Vince's doing. Dalton asked the firefighters where Charlie and her father were. The firemen said that they were both taken by ambulance and are now in the hospital. Seeing this fact, Dalton decided to stay in this town and planned to destroy Ben and all his men. Shortly, Dalton arrived at Ben's place and saw Vince who was cleaning. Dalton suddenly asked if it was his idea, because Dalton had intended to leave that place and didn't want to have anything to do with their group anymore. But their doings against Charlie and her dad made Dalton have to go back and destroy all of them. One punch at Vince's throat was enough to make him die, because he couldn't breathe anymore. After that, Dalton was about to leave that place, but he accidentally saw Mo and asked where Ben was. Mo was scared so he said that Ben would have a meeting at Harvest Key at 5 in the morning to get some of the money for urgent purposes. It was revealed that in the past, at Dalton's last match in the USC arena, he fought his best friend for the prestigious heavyweight championship. Unfortunately, during the match, Dalton couldn't control his emotions and attacked his friend, causing his friend to die in the fighting arena. Meanwhile, Dalton was now on the beach to monitor the distribution of large amounts of money to Ben. He then started his plan to take the money and got the police on duty to hand it over to Ben. Dalton was now on the boat where he lives, preparing bombs for a plan that he had prepared. Tom was also there to talk to Dalton and ask him to return the money to Ben, because Ellie has now been held captive by them. They were threatening to kill Ellie if Dalton didn't return the money immediately. Tom said if his daughter meant anything to Dalton, Tom wanted Dalton to help him get her back before this afternoon. Hearing this, Dalton agreed to Tom's request and would come to the place where Ben was. After taking Ellie's ex-boyfriend's boat by force, Dalton immediately headed to Ben's yacht, which was in the middle of the ocean. Before Dalton got off, he activated the bomb he prepared first. Finally, Dalton met Ben and Tom, who seemed relaxed about the condition of his daughter, who he said was being held captive by Ben. Tom said that it was just bait for Dalton so that he would meet them here. But in reality, it turned out that Ben was actually holding Ellie captive without Tom's knowledge, which of course made Tom very angry knowing this fact because his daughter had to be involved in all this. Suddenly, from a distance, Knox followed them using the boat he stole. When they were distracted, Dalton set off the bomb and blew up the yacht. Dalton immediately looked for Ellie's whereabouts who was being held captive. After they managed to get out of the yacht, Ellie boarded a boat but Ben was also there. Ben then paralyzed her and took her away from that place, while Knox continued to target Dalton using his boat and tried to kill him. However, Dalton managed to hold onto the rope of the boat and tried to drop Knox from the boat. Dalton managed to crash the boat, and he succeeded in jumping on Ben's boat, throwing Knox into the ocean. Knox, who still survived from the incident, was trying to go towards the roadhouse. Meanwhile, Dalton was almost hit by a fishing spear that Ben shot at him and Dalton started beating Ben, before Knox got there by crashing the car he stole. Their second fight happened. Both Dalton and Knox used their fighting skills to defeat each other. Knox stabbed a knife into Dalton's stomach, and at the same time, Ben got up and asked Knox to kill Dalton immediately. However, Knox didn't like it when he was ordered like that by Ben, so Knox broke Ben's neck until he died. Dalton started to get up and then stabbed the knife into Knox's body, and he died. On the other hand, Tom had just arrived at that place, then asked Dalton to leave immediately. Tom would cover up all Dalton's actions. Before the movie ended, Dalton was seen waiting for a bus to return to his house. Then, Charlie, who had returned from the hospital, thanked him for being a hero to her. Dalton also gave a suitcase containing Ben's money to Charlie and her father.